you've got the potential to be huge in this industry. You just need the right training. So I am personally going to send you to culinary school. MasterChef is a pretty feel-good show even at its worst, but here are 10 of the most emotional moments to have ever taken place on the show. And what better way to start than to start with a contestant who brought everyone to tears with an incredible dessert. Congratulations. Really good job. There is no doubt that Christine left a lasting impression, being the first ever blind contestant to win Master Chef in season three. But what happened in episode five brought everyone to tears, including her. It all started when the red team conquered a tough team challenge, sending the blue team into a high-stakes pressure test. The tension was palpable, as someone was inevitably going home. On the following day, the home cooks gathered for the pressure test, and the task was to make apple pies. But Christine had her doubts about how well she'd be able to do. Baking is not my forte at all. Visually, I'm at a disadvantage, but I know I need to still put that pie together and make it look aesthetically pleasing. She feared her inexperience might lead to her elimination. The judges recognized the challenge she faced too, especially once the pie hit the oven. Given her visual impairments, how could she judge how well the crust was baked? Despite these obstacles though, Christine refused to let her lack of sight deter her. If she was going down, she was going down swinging. As for the challenge, each contestant had to create the same dish with the same ingredients. But they needed to add something special to stand out. And they only had an hour and 15 minutes to figure it all out. The judgment focused on the filling, the crust, and the overall technique and you could practically feel Christine's nervousness. With time running out and only 40 minutes left, the contestants all struggled to get their pies into the oven. And that's when Christine faced an unexpected complication. I broke. There's no way, I just don't have any more flour. Yeah, and to make matters worse, she had run out of flour to help stick things back together. Doubts loomed about whether she could complete her pie in time. Yet, Christine's determination prevailed as she started from scratch. Aside from the time component and her obvious visual impairment, she couldn't taste it once it was done, stopping her from making any last-minute adjustments. It's heartbreaking that she had absolutely no hope when it was her turn to serve the judges. I think it probably looks like a pile of rubbish. But despite her nervous breakdown and elimination breathing down her neck, she couldn't have been more wrong. It looks stunning. Ramsey even encouraged her to stop doubting herself. You've got to start believing yourself more, okay? Come on, come on. There wasn't a single person in the room that wasn't tearing up, but it wasn't until he took a bite of her apple pie that the real magic happened. Ramsey was shocked. The flavor's amazing, okay? It's delicious, so well done, okay? Congratulations. Christine had nailed the dish, from the crust to the color to the flavor. An all-around amazing presentation. But this next moment, while equally emotional, wasn't nearly as heartwarming. Micah Yarrow bravely stepped into the auditions. A lot of my family do not view culinary arts as a worthy way to spend my time. However, even after giving a subpar performance in the first audition, Ramsey saw potential in him and gave him a battle pass, something that he could only play once in the entire round of auditions. Although he initially struggled in the kitchen, he swiftly transformed into one of the season's strongest contenders. But tragically, during the family reunion episode, he was the only one who didn't get a reunion of his own. Unfortunately, um, mum and dad can't be here, but tonight, you're not alone, okay? You're with us. You're with the MasterChef family. Remember that, okay? Not only did none of his family members show up to support him, but he also made a critical mistake when it came to his dish. The problem for me is that it's not pink, it's stone red raw. We'll find out when we get through that. Let's try, shall we? The dish didn't live up to the high expectations the competition had at this point in the game, and it tasted exactly like it looked. Consequently, he was eliminated, a turn that brought out a ton of deep emotions from everyone. It's a shame that Micah didn't have the support he needed to really shine, which made his journey that much more challenging. 
Nevertheless, I hope he's run into found family since the show. The type of people that can lift him up even when he's at his lowest. He deserves that much. Moving on, we all know that pressure tests are where the real drama lives in MasterChef, where even the greatest of cooks can crumble. But in this episode, something totally different happened. The challenge was to whip up a stunning layered cake in just two hours, with a strict minimum of six layers. And the goal? To bake a cake that wasn't just delicious, but also a feast for the eyes, as well as a marvel of technical skill to boot. When it was time for judgment, Ben was the first to take the stage, and boy did he bring the emotions. I've been perfecting this cake for five years, and I believe this is the first time I have had the ingredients to be able to give you something that represents me truly as a cook. Tears welled up as he presented his pumpkin carrot cake with cream cheese and candied hazelnuts. According to Ben, it was the first time he had all the right ingredients to truly showcase his best to the judges. And man, oh man, did he nail it. That is extraordinary. Absolute magic on a fork. And Ramsay saw the power of what he brought to the table, calling it absolute magic on a fork. As for Graham, he was so blown away that he had to pause just to find the right words. And when he finally came up with something, he claimed his mouth had an orgasm. Yeah, it was that good. <sighs> On to the next. You've got the potential to be great. Will you accept that offer? Hell yeah, sure. Now, I personally think Gabriel from season 8 was one of the most underrated contestants of all time. Sadly, he found himself facing an elimination challenge. And tonight, they are all going to need to make one of those incredible fresh pastas from scratch. Pasta from scratch. Never an easy task, let me tell ya. But Gabriel gave it his all, and it was plain to see. Although he had never done anything like it before, Gabriel was feeling pretty confident. But thankfully, not in an arrogant way. Things seemed to go pretty well during prep, but when it came to presenting the dish, Gabriel's confidence took a major hit. The judges weren't as impressed as he'd have liked, even visually. Have you ever cooked cannelloni before? Never before, chef. This is not what it's supposed to look like. When it was Ramsay's time to judge, he went as far as to call it lasagna instead of cannelloni. As for the taste, not great to say the least. The filling was bland, the sauce was too sweet, just a complete mess. So it was no surprise that he was eliminated. But of course, Gabriel knew he had it in him to succeed in the future. And the judges also recognized his talent. He just needed a little more work. So the next thing that happened was truly heartwarming. You've got the potential to be huge in this industry. You just need the right training. So I am personally going to send you to culinary school. Oh yeah, Ramsey wasn't about to let a talent like him go to waste, and knew exactly what he needed to get him started. Gabriel was over the moon about it. This man was ready to put his best foot forward and learn from his mistakes, and I think he truly deserved every bit of what he got. It's a shame he never made it far in season 12. I really like the guy and was happy to see him come back. Still, I hope he's kicking ass as a private chef. Now, do you remember one of the most intense rivalries to have ever taken place on the show? Well, the two were gonna come face to face, but not in the way either of them would have liked, at least initially. The upcoming team challenge would be tackled in pairs. When asked who he'd least like to work with, Leslie wasted no time in naming Iran, setting the stage for some serious tension. But here's the kicker. Courtney, the reigning champ, had the power to pair everyone up. So it's no surprise that Leslie and Iran were stuck working with each other. In the pantry, Leslie, trying to avoid drama, agreed to go along with whatever Iran wanted. Now, fast forward to episode 12's prawn pressure test. These live prawns were no joke, and they had to be prepared in three ways. Ceviche, tempura, and butterflied. The catch? Only one contestant would survive. But when they got down to it, Iran was visibly struggling. Meanwhile, Leslie, usually a really confident cook, was surprisingly humble. I'm just as nervous as the people behind me. They're just as good. 
We're the top 10 here. This is no joke. I don't underestimate them. I just got to beat them. Pressure mounted, Iran started cracking. I'm really stressed right now. Hey, you can do this. She was almost in tears. That's when Ramsey stepped in with a pep talk, reminding her of her accomplishments up to that point and urging her to push through. When the tasting began, Leslie's dishes impressed the judges, but Iran's had issues, especially with the ceviche. In the end, it came down to Leslie and Iran, who had once despised each other, but had formed a bond as the competition progressed. Tonight, this is a tale of uh, eldest versus our youngest. But what was really the highlight here was what they said about each other, especially Leslie. I did not expect to grow the way I have been growing and to work out my differences with this young lady. She's not a girl, she's a young lady. Sweet, right? Sadly, Leslie and the rest had to bid farewell to Iran, with Leslie ultimately taking the win. But Iran didn't go without saying a few words. Who's gonna win MasterChef? Leslie. Love you, girl. Iran, graciously acknowledging Leslie's potential, predicted his win, leaving everyone a little misty-eyed. Damn, talk about touching. But MasterChef season 13 came with a twist as far as the usual format was concerned. We were introduced to a diverse group of chefs from the Northeast. Eager to secure a coveted spot in the competition, these chefs brought their A-game with their signature dishes, but not everybody was fortunate enough to make it in. Among the hopefuls was Eddie, a 31-year-old party promoter from Brooklyn who presented his unique pistachio tres leches with pistachio crumble, raspberry sauce, and creme anglaise. I actually made uh, my take on the tres leches. I did a pistachio cake with tres leches, creme anglaise, a raspberry sauce, and a pistachio crumble. Despite the dish's unconventional appearance, Joe was a fan of how it looked, but found the taste not quite able to back it up. And despite his reservations, he admired Eddie's personality and gave a hesitant yes to allowing him to compete. Arone also granted approval, albeit with concerns about the dish's sauce and moisture levels. Guest judge Daphne, however, wasn't on board. Because there wasn't quite the balance of sauce to cake that I would have liked to have seen, it's a no for me. She thought that the imbalance between the sauce and the cake ruined the whole experience. Ramsey echoed her and expressed doubt about Eddie's readiness to face down the harsh competition in front of him. Eddie's disappointment was palpable, but in a surprising turn of events, Joe extended him a lifeline. Yeah, Joe of all people. I'll take you in, you tour my restaurants. We can put you on the path to the culinary career that you really deserve. I promise that, bro. He offered Eddie a position at his restaurant in New York, something that nobody expected but touched everybody's hearts all the same. Ramsey had a rare display of emotion of his own, too. Gotta give credit where it's due. Joe deserves all the praise for that move. He's definitely not my favorite judge, but he took a chance on Eddie and opened a ton of doors for him. I'm hoping he goes far in his career. Anyway, if there's one person who I think was truly passionate about the art of cooking, then it's gotta be Adam from season eight. But that passion still somehow ended him up in the elimination round against Caitlyn. And their elimination challenge was as complex as they come. Tonight, you'll be making my signature chicken and potato dish. They had to replicate Ramsey's dish. From flavor to texture to presentation, it was all supposed to match perfectly. Don't think I need to tell you just how tall a task that was. But Adam was confident he could make it happen. This man knew what had to be done and he wasted no time in getting started. The level of concentration this guy had was astonishing. It's clear he wasn't gonna back down without putting up a good fight first, but things took a serious turn when it came to making the most important part of the dish. That poached chicken breast is gonna cool down. Even if he goes into searing it, he can get raw chicken or dry chicken. And just like that, when it finally came down to presenting the dishes, things of course didn't go exactly as Adam had planned. His entire dish was beautiful from the taste to the presentation, but it had just one flaw, and it was a really big one, the chicken. When Ramsey pointed it out, 
Adam almost broke down. It's raw in the middle, chef. <laughs> you could literally hear his voice breaking. And I mean, it was a big deal. Since this was his one shot to prove his parents wrong and make a splash in the culinary industry. And moments later, he couldn't hold it in any longer. I know how talented you are, you just proved that, but that's a brilliant effort, young man. <laughs> Remember that. The result was obvious. Adam was eliminated. But what matters most is that he went down fighting, and that speaks volumes about his determination and spirit. With that, let's skip over to season 9, which had all sorts of challenges, but this by far was the worst of them all. So in episode 7, Samantha found herself in the elimination round, and she had to prove her worth with one simple dish churros. But Samantha chose to do things differently. The technique she was using to integrate the eggs into the batter was cumbersome, but maybe it was the only method she was familiar with? I couldn't tell you. But before that, Ramsay wanted to know how she'd feel if she got eliminated, and her reply was definitely one to remember. How devastated would you be? Yeah, that'd be really devastating. Um, just like putting everything on hold to be here and leaving all my friends and family behind, especially when my family needs me the most right now, you know, it hasn't even been a year since we lost my dad. She'd left everything behind to chase her dreams, and especially at a time when her family needed her the most. However, this time, she was put in a tough spot. I know we're gonna hit that year mark soon, in a couple weeks here, and I know my sister's gonna have a hard time, and just the fact that I can't be there for her is just, that's really hard. She felt couldn't possibly be measurable. Her entire family was counting on her. And thankfully, her churros ended up tasting better than they looked. Phew. Close call. Now, winding back the clock to season two, to the time when one contestant had to face the brunt of Joe's disapproval. And yeah, I think Joe is at his worst here. In episode 9, Jennifer Bem emerged victorious and had the power to choose a dish from Whitney's cookbook. She went with crispy catfish, and in a surprise twist, the other contestants had to recreate it within 60 minutes. But that wasn't all. To recreate Whitney's dish, down to the last grain of salt without a recipe. Recipes allowed. They had to rely on their senses alone. Now, brace yourselves, because Jennifer had a serious advantage. She was given a basket filled with all the ingredients to make her catfish. But here's where it got tricky. The remaining contestants had to identify all 29 ingredients just by looking at it. And they only had five minutes to figure it out. Fast forward to judgment time, and Adrian Nieto was feeling uneasy about his dish. The plating just... He confessed that he focused so much on the flavor that he might have forgotten about the presentation. And then came Joe. So obviously another contestant who refuses to follow direction, I don't really understand. Surprisingly, this time, he started commenting before even tasting the food. Poor Adrian had put a lot of effort into it, and here Joe was, practically spitting in his face. Joe finally tasted the dish, and his remarks didn't sound too harsh initially, but what he did next was totally uncalled for. Let me win this contest for you. All right, so you take this, you put it here, like it was on Whitney's dish. You take two pieces of fish, you put it over it, you take the tartar sauce, you put it in the front. God, I hate it when the guy disrespects food like that. Even Ramsey was embarrassed. However, in spite of it all, he managed to avoid elimination. He landed in the top three worst dishes, but lived to cook another day. Talk about a close call. And now, let's head over to MasterChef Junior Season 2, which had its own slew of emotional moments. First up, there was Coco, a 10-year-old contestant, who broke down in tears because she thought her mashed potatoes were too salty. God, I hate seeing sad kids. But how was Ramsay gonna take it? Your mashed potatoes are too salty, let's have a look. He surprised everyone by tasting her potatoes and gently explaining that she just didn't mix the seasoning all the way through. Then there was Isabella, who presented her chicken parmesan. But things didn't go too well for her either. The sad news is the chicken is undercooked. Ramsay cut into it and realized it was completely raw. Poor Isabella was heartbroken. Back at her station, the other kids rallied around her, trying to cheer her up. Number one rule, always have fun. Ah, <sighs> what a wholesome show. 
Now, have I missed any of your favorite emotional moments from the show? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And hey, if you're always looking forward to my latest updates and want some cool perks to sweeten the deal, make sure to head on over to the membership tab right here. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check out my next post right here. It's even better.